morning and welcome to our time of worship as we prepare for the service. Did you know that your vocal cords are within your muscles? No. <laughs> Interesting. You need to use the muscles of your throat, your mouth, and your vocal cords. So like all things muscular, you need to have a good warm up. Otherwise, you could do yourself some damage. That's one very physical reason why you have this time to prepare our voices to sing God's praises. But we also want to prepare our hearts and our minds to respond to his love with our love, to respond to his praise with our praise and thanksgiving. And so we have this time to worship him. So please, throughout this time, sit or stand whatever the Spirit would lead you to do. Sing with us or meditate on the words wherever it is appropriate to you. But let us do all with our focus on our beautiful Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let's worship him. Sorts of people around the throne. And 
day after day they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honour and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will we were created. And then a bit later, they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals. And now they're singing specifically to Jesus. Because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased men for God. From every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour, and glory, and praise. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise, and honour, and glory, and power, forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. Let us also say Amen, and sing these words to him who sits on the throne.
done all things well. And we thank him and praise him for that. Please do now stand and join with us if you're able to worship him. Indeed, 
He who watches over Israel never sleeps nor slumbers. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps all harm from you and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Amen. Isn't that encouragement this morning? Yes. The Lord of heaven stands beside us, watches over us and protects us. What a comfort that is this morning. Join with me as we pray. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for a new day. We thank you indeed for a new week. And we thank you that our first act of this new week is to come here before you. To come and to sing your praise. To bring our worship before you. To come before you in prayer. And to open your word and listen to what you have to say to us. So Father, this morning we pray that you would give us open hearts and open minds as once again we open your word. Father, this morning we pray that you would bless Frank as he comes to speak to us. Give him the words to say so that it is not his words but you speaking into the hearts of each one of us. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Now, Daniel is not here, so if you were coming this morning expecting uh, to hear Daniel, uh, he's actually on holiday this week and will be in the next week as well. So we have uh, Frank with us today, who is a member here with us. Um, we're delighted to have Frank to come and share with us, um, and he will come and speak to us in a wee minute or two. Before he does that, uh, I do, as ever, have a few notices to go through with you. Monday this week? Yeah. Yay! You want to do a wee spiel there, Bob? <laughs> After a wee break, we are starting the guitar group up again tomorrow night. So anybody that fancies learning how to play the guitar or is just interested in having a go at one or never had a go before, please feel free to come along. 7 o'clock through the cafe tomorrow night. And uh, we'll sort you. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. So that is the guitar group back after its break Monday night. And it's there every week. It's a weekly thing. So if you fancy coming along, Bob and the gang uh, will get you sorted out. Tuesday, the craft group will be... Oh, sorry, Hen. I'm firing away away here. Women's Fellowship uh, is having an extra meeting Monday the 16th. Well, that's next week. <laughs> Not this week. Don't be confused by that. Monday the 16th. Uh, which is the week tomorrow. Uh, a speaker is booked and coming from Glasgow, uh, Johanna Steele, so if you know that name, uh, she's from the Zambezi Mission, so keep that one for in your diary, uh, the Women's Fellowship. Now this Sunday, as we uh, are together, um, we have our wee, well, we've got a lot of stuff on that back table, actually. Uh, on that back table, as well as the, the normal collection, uh, we also have our wee gift aid envelopes, so if you are looking to give and do it by gift aid, then please do fill it out in one of the wee envelopes there. Uh, thank you to Al for sorting that out. But also on that back table, we have the Scottish Bible Society box uh, is there this week, and this week it's for Malawi, so all funds raised will be going to Malawi. Now, I'm just going to read a tiny wee bit of the, the leaflet here, but I'll stick that on the back table if you would like to have a read uh, yourself of it. Sunday schools in Malawi are often overcrowded. They are bursting at the seams, but they are hugely under-resourced. It is not uncommon for 100 children to share one children's Bible between them, with each child having to wait patiently for their turn to take the well-used copy home to read. Now, if we had 100 parents in our Sunday school, not only would we be delighted, but we're pretty sure that we could resource them all with a Bible each. So if you would like to donate to that cause, the Bible Society box is on the back table and I'll leave the leaflet there for you to have a read of. That's the Scottish Bible Society. 
At the back, as you go out as well, there is our word for the day. Please feel free uh, to help yourself to one of those um, if you would like a wee devotional uh, as you go through your own um, personal uh, reading. Tuesday, back to the craft group. Um, the craft group's on again this Tuesday, normal time, 2 o'clock, and they would love to see as many of you as possible come along to the craft group. Wednesday night we have our prayer meeting here, so if you would like to come along to the prayer meeting, you are more than welcome. It would be lovely to see as many of you as possible along to the prayer meeting. So that's Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. We have it in the cafe, we have it around a cup of tea, uh, so please do come and join us for that prayer meeting as we pray for this church here, for uh, the East Nuke, and for the world in general. Please do come along and share with us in that time of prayer. Which brings us back to uh, Friday. This Friday we have our Friendship Club. Once again, this Friday we will be in Crail. So if you would like to come along to that, or if you know someone in Crail that would benefit from a wee soup lunch or a wee blender, then please do get them to come along to the Friendship Club in Crail. That runs from half past 11 until half past 1. The following Friday we will be back here in Pitt and Wheel for our Friendship Club, so keep that in your diary as well. It's at the same time. Now, I'm needing a soup for Crail. Anybody volunteered to make me a soup for this week in Crail? Alice, thank you very much. Um, thank you so much to you all. Now, I'm getting a wee bit of broken records, but I do really want to say thank you to those who do make soup so regularly and contribute to the Friendship Club. Um, Jill was saying this week, uh, actually, that if you are struggling, last week I said if you're struggling for financially, we could pay uh, for some ingredients to help um, make soup if need be. But Jill was saying today that the community larder uh, in Anstruther is also uh, on each Thursday where they are giving away surplus ingredients um, for things like soups. So uh, that might also be another way that we can not only uh, cut down on waste, but also make soup for the Friendship Club. So just something to bear uh, in your minds. Yes, that's the Friendship Club. Saturday, Phyllis, are you back this Saturday? We're back yeah, this Saturday, but we're back next Saturday as well. How many more to go? Um, two. Two more to go. Two more to go. That's been uh, quite a, a long um, period, but it's been such a blessing for those who have been involved. That's the Freedom in Christ uh, course on Saturday morning. So if you are uh, involved in that, then you've only got two more weeks to go uh, to finish that particular journey. So thank you to Phyllis and the team who are, uh, who are running that. Which brings us back uh, to next Sunday here at Coastline. Um, we'll be back normal time at half past ten. Um, your speaker next week is me, so uh, if you're not liking what you're hearing just now, don't come next week. Uh, but seriously, it'd be lovely to see you all uh, back next week. The other two things that I just wanted to draw your attention to, without taking all of Frank's time, is we have a couple of things uh, happening in the summertime. Now, last week I told you uh, a wee bit about them. Um, we are joining along with uh, St. Bonin's um, Parish Church uh, to do the nearly new uh, sale that they have done in years gone by. Uh, we're going to help just to um, make that happen this year. So the dates for that, people were asking me this week what the dates are for that. Um, it runs um, from the 18th of July to the 29th of July. Okay, 18th to the 29th of July. So please kind of mark that off in your calendar. Um, we will be looking for volunteers to help with that, with the selling of uh, the produce that, that will be going. Uh, that will happen in St. Bonin's Church Hall. So please uh, keep those dates in your diary. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have a wee sheet so that you can start filling in when you can or cannot uh, help us with that. So that is um, volunteers needed for the nearly new. Folk were also asking about where and when they can drop off goods for the nearly new. Um, there's going to be several drop off um, sessions, if you like, um, so that in the lead up to that week. So the 9th of July, which is a Saturday, the 11th of July, which is a Monday, and Tuesday, the 20th, uh, 12th of July, is going to be the drop off times for that. So that's something else to put in the calendar. I do have a wee poster, so I'll stick that up on the notice board should you need it. The other main thing uh, that we are doing in the summer, aside from everything else we do, is we will be having our normal, after uh, a few years break, we will have, be having our normal um, Pitmeam Arts Festival Cafe here 
uh, in the church or in the cafe actually. Um, so we are also looking for volunteers for that. So the dates for that uh, is the 6th to the 13th of August. So another one just to mark off in your diary. Again, we'll have uh, more information on that one to come uh, as to when we're looking for volunteers and what the tasks are we're looking to have done. I think, finally, that is all the announcements for this week, unless anybody's going to shout at me. Jill, thank you. Um, there is some tablet in the cafe, so when you go through, uh, please stick a pound or whatever you can afford in the donation box for the tablet, and the money for that is all going off to Ukraine. Okay? And watch John, because he'll be babbling straight to the tablet. Right, <laughs> <laughs> when we finish, everybody rush out the door before he gets out there. <laughs> I think that is me for announcements. Great, no more heckling for me. Fantastic. We'll save that for next week, shall we? Uh, we are going to sing our next song. After that, Frank is going to come up and speak to us. So our next song is Great Is Thy Faithfulness. <laughs>
and the last time I was here, I kept it on and Tom greeted me with, I didn't know you were a singer. <laughs> Good morning, nice to see you. Uh, most of you know exactly who I am, Frank, a uh, member of the church here. Danny's away, as he should be, I gave my real telling off, because last time I spoke he decided to stay. So I've said to you, Malik, off, oh, that's it. So, lovely to be with you. Um, and you could say hello to everybody, and I'm only going to ask you to do it once. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> good, good that you are here. Uh, it's good to have you. It's a bit of fun. But the whole point is that we're going to be looking at what it means to, for we, us to be with God and <coughs> God to be with us. One of the fantastic things I love about reading about the disciples of Jesus. He said, you'll be able to do the things I did, and even more, because he'd been with them, and they'd learned all the things that God wanted to do. A lot better than that to follow my leader stuff. But it was basically that. God sent Jesus, Jesus was with the disciples, the disciples were with Jesus, and they worked as a great team. Yeah? So,
the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign that as I who have sent you, when you are brought out the people of Israel, you will worship them on this mountain. And one last movie then. I don't leave, like leaving end of stories hanging, so turn with me then to Exodus 33, another part of the Moses story. And we're reading from Exodus 33, verse 12, and down for a few verses. And Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me to lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favour with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so that I may continue to find favour with you, and remember this nation as your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish us, me and your people, from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you and know you by name. Let's pray. Our God and our Heavenly Father, we know that your work is able to help us in every way. We know that by your work you will teach us, you will guide us, and you will encourage us. So Father, we ask today that you will give us ears to hear. Father, will give us a desire to be in your presence, to know that you are with us. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And anybody who's going out to Sunday school can go. And I'm watching for adults speaking out. Please join us and be able to stand to sing.
make a public policy. I read my notes from you perfectly correct. Okay. And the second thing, I'm going to do what teachers are never supposed to do. I'm going to start with a question. You're always told, never start with a question. So here we go. What's the Bible about? God, God, I need to show you mine. Right, okay. Keep going, anybody? Right. Spirit of God speaking through. Right, yeah, okay, keep going. Anybody? Right, right stop. Yes. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is, the Bible is all about God. But actually, it's all about God and his relationship with people. It's all about God and his relationship with people. It tell, yes, the Bible tells us about the magnificence of God, his creative power, all these things he does. But almost every place you read in the Bible, whether you're reading the Psalms or the early books of the Bible, or whether you're reading the New Testament, it's all about relationships. It's all about God and how he got on with a very difficult bunch of folk. You and me. Let me give you an illustration of that. One, one of the things, I love gardening. Christy, will take, my wife will tell me that I spend lots of time out pottering about and I usually come in and fill me dirty. That's just me. Um, but gardens are great. I think I would probably have liked the garden of Eden. I'm, I'm absolutely positive with a lot. But I don't get any trouble for touching things I shouldn't. Oh. Anyway, the, one of the magnificent things about it is though, about God, because God was there. Now, one of the earliest things we read about is God goes for walks in his garden. This is how we put the picture of God. And, and he did it in the cool of the day, very clever, because I've tried doing walking when I've been in holiday in the heat of the day, you know, and it's something that my God and squats and nothing. But anyway, God was in the habit of doing that. And one occasion he comes and Adam and Eve have messed up big style and they're hiding. And God says, where are you? Well, that a, seems a daft question for God to ask, because God's supposed to know everything. Am I right? Yeah. Where are you? In other words, what he said is, when I'm here, you're usually here. We keep company with each other. So God's asking the question is, why are you not here today when you were here yesterday? We've always been together. That's the question. And we know what's happened. That the man and the woman had mocked up big style. They disobeyed God. And they were now scared to be with God. Because they thought they were for it. And God asks, where are you? Because God was in the habit of keeping company. It must have been great that Adam and Eve's habitual behaviour was to be in regular and constant company with the Creator. And they exchanged all that for a lie. You could be like God. God was with them. You could be like God. You know everything he knows. Must have been great wandering around with God and, you know, you know, finding out all the things that were going on and all the things that had been made. And we don't know what happened, but we know that God kept company with Adam and Eve, and that was their constant, regular feature of their lives. And we, we've had to wait for God's company in that sense until Jesus returned, for him to renew that desire for our company. Now let, let me take you on a little journey. I'm not asking you to turn up. I'm going to look at some of the people in the Old Testament who knew God with them. Um, particularly Joseph and uh, Joshua and Moses. Now I'm not going to take huge time going through one by one, but what I want us to do is to consider what it means for God to be with us. Now the reason we're doing this is because I'm hoping this week to look in the Old Testament and then in, on the 22nd uh, to look at God's presence as we find it in the New Testament. So, 
Let's look at Joseph. Joseph had been framed. Somebody had set him up. Potiphar's wife had tried to seduce uh, Joseph. Joseph had resisted. He didn't want to disobey his master or insult or offend his master. He didn't want to offend God by doing what Potiphar's wife had suggested. So, out of his goodness, he ends up in jail. Now, he's not in any old prison. He's actually in the king's prison, which happens to be in Potiphar's garden, if you read the Bible closely. The, the, the king's prison was actually next to Potiphar's house. So, in actual fact, being kept in the king's prison was a wee bit of a bonus because it meant it saved Joseph from too much embarrassment when he sent into the ordinary prison and tell the story. It probably saved Potiphar could just slide Joseph over from the servants' quarter of the house into the prison and keep his wife from getting embarrassed as well. So there's a bit of grace in that. You might not think so. God is going to use Joseph, and yet now Joseph is in prison. But it tells us that while Joseph was in prison, God was with him. While Joseph was in the prison, God was with him and showed him kindness. So much kindness that when Joseph was held in the warden, run the prison, the warden could take several days off for all the time he wanted because everything that Joseph touched worked out well. And what's the reason the Bible gives for that? Why did everything that, as the Bible tells us actually, everything that Joseph did was successful? Why was it? Because God was with him. It's as simple and straightforward as that. In other words, God was there. One of the big questions that gets asked when things go wrong, look at all the happening in Ukraine at the moment. Think of things like the Holocaust and things like that. Think of some of the great disasters they've had. And the question everybody asks is, where was God? That's the question that everybody asks. The daft thing is, of course, the folk that ask where God is are usually the ones who don't believe he exists in the first place. And he only gets uh, acknowledged <laughs> and mentioned when things go wrong. Isn't that a bit but that's exactly it. But everything that happened to Joseph in the prison was in God's hand because where was God? God was in the prison as well. God was with. As we come to look in the New Testament later in a couple of weeks, we'll notice that that's the, the whole feature of Jesus coming. He was here in the midst of the mess that we had made and dealt with the messed up people. Look at the group of disciples he, he chose. God loves to be with his people. Joseph was being trained. You can think of better training schools than the, I'm glad I went to Glasgow Uni and not to Babylon in prison. Because you know, as you can learn in a prison situation, but probably not the right things. But Joseph prospered in prison. And we know that when he was taken out of the prison that he went on to be effectively the Prime Minister of Egypt. And during the times of famine he preserved the lives not only of the Egyptians but of his own family and many nations round about. And why was he able to do that? Because God was with him. He knew the presence of God with him. And the sense that God gave him the abilities to do the things he did, the time to do the things he did, the people round about him to help him. God was there. God was involved right up, well, completely involved. And it says, just as we leave Joseph, the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. So when people ask the question, Where's God when things are going wrong? God is always with us, always in charge. All that happens is 
sometimes our circumstances are so hard and so bitter and so difficult, we don't actually notice. Now, I don't like talking out the same thing that get talked about all the time, but I'm going to do it. You know the, the bit, everybody knows the story of the footprints, don't we? So, I'm just going to briefly mention it. It's, what happens in, in the footprint story is there's two sets of footprints. There's you and there's Jesus, and we're walking together along the shore. And the footprints are there, there's two sets. And then we ask Jesus, eh, can you explain to me that every time things get hard, there's only one set of footprints? In other words, the implication is that Jesus has walked off and left us in the difficulties. And the response that Jesus is giving us, that's the time when I carried you. Where is God when we are in the prison? God has promised to be with us and never to leave us nor for take us. Never to abandon us. Never as we sang. Never once have we walked alone. It may have felt like it. It may still be feeling like it just now that you're, you're, you're on your own. But let me assure you, the God who sent his son to die and went with us that far is not going to withdraw his promise to be with us for our good and for the sake of being in God's wonderful company and presence. Let's move on a bit. Let's move to the Moses situation. Moses gets to the burning bush. And he comes and does his nosy in. I wonder what's going on here. I'd been up there a shot as well just to see what it was. I think most of us would. God got his attention and then God said, Oh, by the way, I know you've been away for about 40 years or so, but I'm sending you back to Egypt. Just spend all this time trying to forget Egypt and get out of Egypt and get Egypt out of me. That's what we're going to be running through Moses' head, I'm sure. And God says, I'm sending you back because I've heard that my people are suffering under the slavery and torture in Egypt. So I have heard and I've come to help and I'm sending you. Now, I've always been quite critical of Moses when he starts saying, I'm not very good at talking, and then he proceeds to give every argument under the sun very eloquently why God has made a mistake. But he said, actually says something that I'm inclined to agree with. He says, who am I that you should send me to Egypt? In other words, what he said to God is, wait a minute, God, you said, you've seen... And you've come to do it, so what you said to me for? God, and what he's thinking, said, wait a minute, he's, he's already being humble and knowing his limitations, but he's actually saying to God something quite sensible. You said you saw, you have compassion, and yet you're saying you're sending me. Who am I that I should go? He said, really, if you see me, you should be going to yourself, Lord. That's, that's the application in this. What's God's response? God, Moses says to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring out the Israelites from Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. Now, I don't speak Hebrew at all. If I was lucky at Bible college, I managed to dodge the Hebrew classes. Because I was only there for a year. That right? Yeah. In fact, don't, I think I used to dodge one or two other classes as well, but David was not allowed to mention that. We were like four weeks together. I was much older than David, of course. But uh, anyway, the what I will be with you, as God is saying, is exactly the same translation as I am with you. I will and I am. There's no distinction in the Hebrew. No distinction at all. So when God's saying, I will be with you, I am with you. And that, of course, has great significance. Because God, 
God's name is, I am. And I will. I will be with you. So when you go to see Pharaoh, and you've asked me a question, who am I that I should go? And how much of us have not asked a question when we felt God asking us to do something and say, I'm not adequate for this? No, I can't do this. But God is actually saying to him, I've heard, and I've come down to help my people, and I'm sending you. But he's actually saying, and I'm with you. So in actual fact, who's doing the work after all? God is. So the, the question is, who are you? That God should use you. If God uses you, God will be with you. Now that is an unbreakable promise. An absolute unbreakable promise. Now let me move very, very quickly to the end of the Moses part. There's a really interesting bit in Exodus 33. Moses has been called, as we've heard in, in the bit we've just looked at. God has said, you're going because I'm sending you, but I'm coming with you. So you're not going to be on your own and all the things you do, we'll be doing it together. Isn't that fantastic that God should actually want to be in partnership with you and me? Fantastic, amazing. That's what church is about. Anyway, the end of the story. Later on, Moses gets a bit dischuffed. He says, I'm supposed to lead these people, and he didn't use the word, but he said it's like herding cats. You know the expression. I've never tried herding them, but I'm assuming that it's not an easy task. He says, you keep telling me I have to lead these people. But you haven't let me know who's going to help me. Wait a minute, hold on. What did God already say? I'm sending you to Pharaoh, and, and all that you do with Pharaoh, and when you bring the folk out into from Egypt, they're going to watch me, and I'm going to be with you. Who are you going to send to me? It's a strange question, isn't it? No. It's like the one that Danny tells about the guy, you know, guy uh, hanging over a cliff on the road. And he, uh, he's told by his rescuer to let the rope go so he can grab the person's hand. And he says, is there somebody else there as well? <laughs> no, I don't tell the stories as well, Danny, but the idea is that Moses is lost, still lost his direction. He doesn't realise that God has prom promised to work on this a permanent one. He says, so, I know, God says, I know you're name and I'm pleased with you. So I will go with you. But what we don't need to know in this few passages is the three story happened before. The, Moses is going up to get the commandments. And when he's away, the people decide to build a gold calf with all the gold that they brought out of Egypt, the bundle that they brought. So God is not exactly too pleased with all the people. So he actually says, in this passage, it is saying, Moses, I'll be with you, but I'm not going with that lot. Because what God has said earlier is, if I go with you, I'll probably destroy you all on the road because you make me sick with your behaviour. So, in this one bit with God and Moses, the discussion, and read it, read it yourself when you get home, that 33, 12 down to 17, what God is saying is, yes, I'm pleased with you, Moses, and I'm going with, with you. And Moses keeps apparently asking the same question. So, let, let, let's look just as we close. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me to meet these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have sent, I know you were in, and you have found favour with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways that I may know, and continue to find favour with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Moses. So Moses said to them, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people, unless you go with us? What else will make us look different or distinguish us 
being the people from all the other people on the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and know you by name. Moses is told by God to do everything I've asked, yet I'm pleased with you. I will go with you and I will give you rest. And Moses keeps saying, but Lord, that's not what I want. You must be the these people. What I want is for you to be with us. If you're not going to be with us, we're not going anyway. You and I have to remember that God is not my God just. He's our God. Moses is here as a, as a leader appealing to God. I know you're sick fed up with them and you don't want to be with these people who have just worshipped the golden calf. And you, you, Moses was getting the promised land with him. But he, what's happening is he says you, you need not just to be pleased with me but you need to take these people. These are the people that you love. The people you've chosen. If you don't if they don't go with you, there's only me. How do all the nations round about say, oh, that's a fantastic Lord, look how he looks after these people. He was actually saying, Lord, it's not enough for me, you, to be with me. I need you to be with everyone whom you love and have saved and rescued. Now, for you and I, I love the bit where Joshua comes in. Joshua gets the job after Moses has done it for 40 years. I hate to have to get a job following a, somebody who's been in the job for 40 years. Or 20 years or anything. Following somebody who's been there for a, for a long time is a very difficult task. Because then he keeps saying, when Moses was here, you know, my, my wife, for, maybe forgive me, you know, the people... She had to speak to other folks that she wouldn't really contact when she left her job working with asylum seekers that she'd done for 20 years. Because it wasn't going to give the person who was given any opportunity to do the job. Well, Moses had been there. Joshua was getting a job. And I think he was really uptight about it. Because God says to him, listen to this, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Can I say from the word of God to you? As I was with Joseph, as I was with Moses, as I was with Joshua, God says to you, I just like that, I will be with you. Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you through the difficulties, through the journeys, through the mistakes, through your questioning. All the things that would happen to Moses. And God was with him. God promises that he will be with you. Now next week, we're going to look at somebody called Emmanuel. You normally think of that at Christmas time. What does Emmanuel mean? God is with us. The presence of God is a wonderful thing. Uh, the, the psalm I was going to ask you to read and I couldn't find was, you know, about as a dear plants. The presence of God is a wonderful thing. There's some fantastic books written about it. There's some very old books, some very different books about the presence of God. But the important thing is, God is for us. So who can be against us? And he proved it, as he said his son, the Lord Jesus, to become God with us. That one day we might be with God. Amen.
sangue del Signore.
We'll be singing two songs together. So please, if you're able, start standing, but if you need to sit down, feel free to do so at any time.
like some two days ago, but kind of disappointing. We wanted to go uh, to uh, the Dales from where we were. And first of all, we had a great big detour because the one single bridge that we had to cross was being repaired for the next five days. Then we reached our destination by a very long roundabout way. Had a rock, and then we thought we'll go down to Hawes. <coughs> we got all the way down, and two miles from Hawes, the bridge was closed. Was that one as well. So we didn't get to Hawes. We ended up doing a detour and just going home. But I said to Christine, the journey's worth it because it's a beautiful countryside. The journey was what it was all about. It wasn't getting there, it was the journey. We just sung a song that talks about radio, about our journey. You hear that all the time. Folks who <coughs> want to put off, the really think of Jesus, they say, I am on a spiritual journey. And sometimes it's a cop out. Sometimes it's absolutely true that we're on a journey towards God. But often, it's because God's on a journey towards us. And I'm going to read to you a little bit from Luke 24. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had that happened. And as we talked and discussed things with each other, Jesus himself See that again. As they were talking, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. <coughs> but they were kept from recognizing He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? Well, they told them about all the disappointment, how the, the expectations they had that Jesus was going to redeem Israel and sort of bring out. And Jesus replied to that as he said to them, how foolish you are, and slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken about. Did not Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Can I repeat that? Did not Messiah, did not I, you say, have to suffer? Did he have to suffer? Well, it's God's plan, so that we could be with him forever, and not just encounter him from time to time. And they continue about it. As they approached the village where they were going, Jesus continued on as if going further. But they asked him to stay, stay with us, for it's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. I love this story. I'm not saying that it's, you know, that when he started to dish out communion, they were having a meal. But they recognised Jesus in that situation. I particularly like being in communion. I, I'm not in communion any closer to Jesus than I am at any other time. God is with us and within us. But in my emotions, I feel much closer to my Saviour when I remember that on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And as he looked at it, he said, this is my body for you. I don't, as I say, find anything magical or like that. I haven't given it. It doesn't make me closer to God. But in this coming to the Lord's table, where he invites us to share, basically at the Lord's table, because Jesus hosted that supper, but he invites you and me to be here at the table with him. So let's pray together just for a moment. Our God and our Heavenly Father, we are full of indications in the Bible that you have done everything so well. Father, we bless you for a remembrance occasion like this when we as a forgetful people 
I am reminded of your death. Father, as you took bread that day with these two disciples and broke it, they, they began to recognize you. They knew who you were. They knew that you had to die to bring them salvation. Father, remind us of the same thing. As we eat drink and as we eat, let us remember that you died to save us. You didn't just come to keep us company, but Father, you came to be God with us by giving yourself. Father, we use the word friend for those who are close to us. And we thank you that Jesus used that word of his disciples and of us who would believe. So Father, we just give thanks for Jesus' willingness to fulfill the need that he spoke of, that he was the only way we could be brought back into relationship with you. Father, we bless you for sending Jesus and Lord Jesus, we bless you that you came. Father, continue to be with us. Continue to make us aware of your presence. Father, help us to enjoy this time of communion with each other and with you. Father, we give you thanks for your provision. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for all that you have done and every remembrance we have of you. We give thanks in your name. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask for uh, some assistance then, Dave. So, when we come out, you'll receive the bread and the wine together and just return to seat. So, I'm afraid it's got to be a bit of a road to uh, One way system will do. Yeah, there is. Thank you. Do you do the, the, the band first? Oh, sorry, of course. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, with two pieces of music, haven't we? No, no. You just serve the band first. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. 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 I'll get that for you. Yeah, I'll just do that some more often. I won't get the stage. I'll, I'll try that. That's fine, okay. Right, we, we have one of the two pieces of bread. Hold on. Let me put my mask on. No, I'll have them all. Please, off. We'll just cut down to you. You want to do that? Okay. Alan, don't be bored because I don't want to dunk it all. <laughs> Well, we are doing that. Our one way system is going to come this way and then back round like that, okay? And then start with this thing. If we also have the wee cup things, so if you would prefer one of the wee cup things, then please let me know.
saying because in two weeks' time we're actually going to start with the grace and not finish with it. So think about what we're actually saying as we bless each other. Let's say the grace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And it's not made up by the Baptist Union, that's a quote from the Bible. Let's sing. This one bass percussion. You have the percussion instruments on the ends of your arms and your legs that hold your feet in your hands. So stamp, clap, whatever. This one really needs some percussion. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.